Hey everybody and welcome back to the next part of my dialing in series for our Line 6 Helix. Today I'm going to continue on with my more effects block uh, dialing in uh, videos rather than amp blocks. Um, yeah, as a lot of you know, I do either like an artist tone or um, an amp tone that I tend to, to like, but I, I've been diving in. I started off with the LA Studio Comp and talked about how we can dial that in and what the different controls do. So let's take a look today at the transistor tape model, one of my favorite delay models in the Helix, and see what we can do with that, understand it better, how it works, and how we can get the sounds we want out of it. So I'm not really going to be saying these are the settings you need, but more just what the settings can do. So we go into dialing it in with a more educated approach. Okay, so the transistor tape is our Helix version or model of the Echoplex EP3 uh, solid state tape delay. All right, let's dive over to HX Edit and take a look and see what we have. So all I've done here, I took my standard template. I put a, a Placator Dirty with 412 Greenback 25 in just to get a uh, basic tone. Sounds good. Something simple. It's more about the delays today. So what I've done is I've set up two snapshots. I've set up one called mono delay and one called stereo delay because we want to discuss both. I mean, there's very uh, major similarities between both, but some differences as well. And it's also a question I get a lot of times where people say, you know, did you dial that preset in stereo or in mono? And just because we dial a patch in or a preset in with stereo blocks doesn't mean the preset is actually stereo, if that makes any sense. The stereo effects have to actually be processing <laughs> the tone to create the stereo effect, right? So a stereo block doesn't necessarily make it so. Much like, you know, one of the, the standard things in the Helix is if we put stereo blocks and then put one mono block at the end, that sums everything to mono and gets rid of our stereo, right? So there's one example. But I'll, I'll discuss that a little bit more as I go along. So on the mono delay, let's take a look at what we have on the transistor tape. Well, first of all, we have note sync. And there's this little clock. I've talked about some of this in previous videos about using delays and stereo delays and whatnot. But I'll recap here. It's always good to go over some of these things. And there's a lot of things a lot of folks already know here, and I'm not really telling you anything new. Um, note sync can either be set in milliseconds or in a note value, right? So up here in our top right hand corner, you know, the right now the helix floor is set at 120 beats per minute. So if we set this to a quarter note, we're going to get a quarter note repeat at 120 beats per minute. Okay, about two repeats every second, or actually exactly two repeats every second. We could also decide to set it in milliseconds. So I could change that to, you know, somewhere in the range of one second. Okay, 500 milliseconds would be half of that, right? And that would be much like the quarter note at 120. Okay, so we, we have to decide for ourselves. I like to set uh, note sync a lot of times because then I can use my tap tempo and whatever tempo I tap in my delays are always going to be in time with my song But that's going to be up to us and our personal preference what we want some people like to use, you know, dotted eighth notes Get some different types of effects, right? And that's going to depend on other settings. Okay, what about, let's just set this back to quarter note for now. Our feedback control is basically going to control how many repeats we get after the fact. So if I set that to zero, I get one simple repeat after. Okay, if I set that to 50%, I'm going to get quite a few repeats that just eventually trail down to nothing. And if I set that way up, we can get these kind of infinite loops where it's just regenerating into itself and continuing to delay and it eventually builds up to just be a, a mess of noise. Some cool effects there though. Um, keep in mind too, we can also assign any of these to our expression pedal as well, right? So we could do something like this. And 
and then decide when we want to cut that noise out. Alright, so how about wow and flutter now? Well, what wow and flutter is, is basically a control that's going to um, allow us to simulate sort of the irregularities in tape moving across a head, okay? Maybe the speed of the tape uh, changing, right? Um, and, and causing little pitch discrepancies. So with the wow and flutter on zero, and let me do this. Let me put a fair number of repeats here, a mix of about 50%. What I want you to listen for is on the repeats. Let's even go with some more repeats. Listen to the tail end of the repeats. That's with minimal wow and flutter. Now let's just go up to 10. And what you'll hear is a real instability in the tails of the, the echoes towards the end. Listen for like tuning discrepancies and whatnot. Let me even turn, you know what? Let me just turn this up to 100. Watch, you won't hear my initial pick attack. Now let's listen to that with the wow and flutter down. Are you hearing the difference on the tail ends? Again. So here on the ends, there's like this instability, like there's almost tuning weirdness going on. So that's a very, very interesting control that we can add a lot of, of character to our, our, our repeats on our overdrive. It's not going to affect the original note that I play. So if I put this back to 50%, if I put my wow or flutter up at 10, and let's say my feedback at 50, Where you're going to hear it is on the end of the repeats. Versus if I have the wow and flutter down. I don't know if you can hear that. You know, if you listen to this on good speakers or even headphones, you're gonna to get to hear the stereo effects we're gonna be talking about and also get to hear those little subtleties. And a lot of these things are fairly subtle, but I'll tell you, something like having the wow and flutter way up might help for that delay to just kind of stand out in the mix a little bit more. But we gotta be careful too, because if it starts sounding like it's out of tune, that may not be what we want. But just being aware of what it does is something that's going to be very interesting. So let's keep that on 10 for now, okay? Now mix control is just that. It's going to balance between having none of the delayed or repeated signals. So if I have that on zero, if I have it on 50%, I'm gonna get roughly the delayed or repeated note is gonna be the same volume as the note I play on the guitar. And if I go to 100%, I'm gonna have no initial dry signal, it's just gonna be the repeat. So it looks like I'm just out of sync when I play that. So we'll leave it at 50% for now. A level is just gonna be the output level of the uh, effect. If we need to feed more signal into the thing that's coming after, we can do that. Headroom is going to allow us to kind of make the delays a little bit dirtier if we want. So, uh, Set at zero, it's just what the normal effect is like. But if I play a note, again, I'm gonna get rid of the wow and flutter for this. Listen to the, to the tails again, and listen to the cleanliness of the, of the tails, of the delays. If I turn that down, they get a little bit dirtier. And if I turn them up, it's supposed to clean them up a bit. Okay, so it gives a little more, I guess the word is grit, 
Maybe it would be more noticeable with a clean tone, okay? That's not a, a control I really play with too much. And trails are, are very simply, with them off, if I have some, some uh, repeated delays going, when I turn the block off, they stop. If I turn trails on, when I turn the block off, they continue, okay? So, you know, if we're switching between snapshots and we want our, our delays to keep going, even though we turn the effects block off, then we can, we can use the trails for that. Okay, so let's just set this at 50% feedback. I'm gonna go back up to 10 on the wow and flutter. Um, level at zero, mix at 50%, quarter note sync. All right, so now, that's fine, we have this sound. <laughs> Now, way more than I would normally use. Now, what I was saying to you before is, we can actually make a stereo delay pretty much copy exactly a mono delay. So just because we have a stereo delay block, depends on how it's set up, it doesn't mean it's actually gonna be giving us any stereo effect. So let's go over to our stereo block and turn that on and turn the mono block off. Now, I'm gonna set the settings the same here. So 50% feedback, quarter note, uh, wow and flutter on 10, mix at 50%. Now you'll notice there are two other, uh, we still have all the same things, mix are gonna do all the same things that the mono version did, but we have scale and we have spread, okay? I'm gonna turn the spread down to zero and I'm gonna keep the scale at 100%. Now let's listen to what this sounds like. <laughs> Let's compare that to the mono version. There's really no difference that I can hear, and that's because we haven't taken advantage, advantage of the stereo controls. And what those are, are scale and spread. So let's look at what scale does first. At 100%, this is just sending my delays straight up the middle, okay? Now let's do this. Let's turn our wow and flutter down. Okay. If I bring that scale down to 50%, or actually let's go down to 0% first. Now listen to what happens. And you need to be listening in stereo where you can hear the different sides panned out. Here's what happens with the scale on zero. It's moved my delay or my echoes over to the left side completely. When I move this up to 50%, what it does, it adds one more delay into the right speaker at half or twice as fast, let's say, right? So now it would be, I have a setting of a quarter note. Now it's going over there in an eighth note and it's bouncing back over here and doing my normal repeats over here. Okay, if I move that to 75%, Okay, if I go to 25%, almost like a slap back delay there, and then our normal delay over here in the left. All right, if I move that scale to 100%, I just have everything straight up the middle again. Okay, now you say, well, what does spread do? Well, what I've found with spread is that if we have no wow and flutter on, it's really not doing much of anything. So if I go from zero on spread, to 10, did you hear much of a difference? Again, zero, 
10. Okay, it's not spreading anything out. Spread is normally talking about widening the stereo spectrum. Well, where this gets interesting is when we bring that wow and flutter back in. So let's go back up to 10 with our wow and flutter. We'll go to our spread on zero. Okay, we hear those kind of little, little uh, out of tune tails on the end of the delays. But now watch what happens when I bring spread up. Now we get our stereo width. It's moving those delays with the wow and the flutter uh, around in the stereo spectrum. Again, if I get rid of the wow and flutter, not much difference between the mono and the stereo again. Even with the spread on 10, I'm not hearing it do much as far as moving those delays around. Maybe it is doing something subtle, but as soon as we bring that wow and flutter back up to 10, that's where we get a huge difference. Here's the mono. So even on a stereo delay, if we take that spread down to 10, down, down from 10 to zero, and keep the scale at 100%, we essentially have a mono delay. As soon as we bring that spread up with the wow and flutter though. We're going to end up with a much wider stereo spectrum. So a lot of times if you're building a preset that you kind of want to have the ability to go between stereo and mono, you could use your stereo blocks, and if you notice, I have all stereo blocks after the delay so that the stereo path stays and doesn't collapse anything to mono. Um, but we could build it with the stereo block and then just use snapshots to decide how much wow and flutter and spread we want, right? We could, we could have one snapshot with spread on zero so that we're just basically not getting much of a stereo effect out of it. You know, and scale on 100%. And then we could have another setting where spread goes up, right? Or maybe we're using that with the 50% scale.
Now, obviously, that might be a little much, right? <laughs> So again, we compare that to the mono. That sounds mono and kind of collapsed, right? Stereo. But as soon as I bring that spread down, basically have the same thing as the mono. Okay, so hope that helps. And I hope that's clear and understandable as far as what the controls do. Now, how would I actually set this up for myself? Like, you know, honestly, I usually probably stay away from super high feedbacks. I usually end up somewhere between 25, 30, 35% at most. Let's, let's go a little to the high end of that. Um, wow and flutter, you know, I probably wouldn't want to go too crazy. Maybe on five or yeah, let's, let's go around there. Uh, scale at 100% for mono compatibility, unless I want to do something really special. And my mix I'll usually have in around, you know, again, maybe 30%, 25 to 35, depending on what I want, right? Headroom I don't really touch, I'll try to keep the trails on. Um, so that would sound like this. And at those settings, uh, let's see here, 32% on mono. Uh, what did we have there? Well, 5.3 on the wow and flutter. Uh, mix down to 33. These two should sound pretty much identical because I don't have any of the spread in there and I have the scale at 100%. So let's listen. Here's the stereo. Mono. Okay, so just because you're using a stereo delay doesn't mean it's actually gonna sound stereo. Now, if I come in here and I bring that spread up, it's now gonna give some stereo spread to that wow and flutter effect. So here's the mono. Stereo. But again, if you want to maximize that, we'd want to bring more wow and flutter in. Mono again. We lose that big width brought in by the spread and the wow and flutter control. What do you guys think? Does that, does that make sense? I hope that was clear. I hope I explained things properly and I hope that'll allow you to be able to dive in and maybe not be afraid of some of those parameters and kind of just have a better knowledge about what they do. And also to know that, you know, just because you're using a, a transistor tape stereo block doesn't mean you're actually getting much in the way of a stereo effect out of it unless you use the right controls and parameters. So I hope that helps a few guys. Um, please like the video and share it with anybody you think would uh, benefit from it. I would really appreciate that. Uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, hit the little bell notification so you get notifications when I'm uh, putting new videos out. And I will be back soon with some more content. Thank you guys as always for tuning in. Much, much appreciated and ciao for now.